Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerninghearts.com presents Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. Monsignor Essif is a priest of the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has served as a retreat director and confessor to St. Teresa of Calcutta. He continues to offer direction and retreats for the Sisters of the Missionaries of Charity. Monsignor Essif encountered St. Padre Pio, who would become a spiritual father to him. He has lived in areas around the world, serving in the Pontifical Missions, a Catholic organization established by Pope St. John Paul II to bring the good news to the world, especially to the poor. He continues to serve as a retreat leader and director to bishops, priests, and sisters, seminarians, and other religious leaders. Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Well, what's on your heart today, Monsignor? Our Lord is making it so clear to those people who are going to Mass, and in fact all over the world, where this gospel is being read. The church is coming to the end of the church here. And our life is going to be coming to an end in this world. And the church is constantly trying to teach us, as our master, Jesus, is trying to make us aware that this world is a place where we're tested and tried. And this is a place where eventually we're going to have to make an accounting of what we have done with the gifts we have been given. And this beautiful account is in the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, and it's just before the last judgment scene in Matthew's Gospel. Many of us just fail to get the real meaning, and it's so beautiful when we hear it. I'd like to read this, beginning with the 14th verse of the 25th chapter. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted them with his possessions. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately The one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who had received two went and traded and and received two more. But the man who had received one went off, dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and was going to settle accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward and brought the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Since you have been faithful in a small matter, I will give you great responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward. Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. The master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Since you have been faithful in a small matter, I will give you great responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding taskmaster, harvesting where you did not plant, gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went out and buried 
the talent that you gave me in the ground. Here it is, I give it back to you. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put the money in the bank so that I on my return could get the interest? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten. For to every one who has, more will be given. And to him who has, and he will grow richer. But from the one who who has not, even what he has shall be taken away. And and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be weeping, wailing, and the grinding of teeth. That last servant is going to receive what in this parable is damnation and suffering for all eternity. The others are going to receive joy. Be with me in my kingdom. This is a very plain teaching on the last judgment. And so, you know, what is this one talent? The kingdom of God, which Jesus has come to preach, is a kingdom of love. The talent, the five talents is love. The person who is in love and has the capacity for love, has gained five more. They're the great saints. St. Francis said, if some of the capacity that I have received from God, the graces that were given to the worst sinner, he would be the greatest of saints. He saw that everything he was receiving, this great saint who lived 800 years ago, who has changed the world by the power of his love. The one who received two, there are those saints. They're the great saints that we have. Then there are the little saints. And I really believe they're people like my grandfather and my mother and family, different members of my family that radiated that love. Who is the one that receives the one? I really believe It's someone like Hitler. I really believe it's someone like Stalin or Napoleon. When you hear of them, they are so self-obsessed. They had so little love. They caused such havoc in the world. And we very seldom think of them as lazy but they were given such whatever they had and they didn't use it with regard to love. Hitler, Stalin, millions and millions of people suffered through their hands. What capacity did they have for love and all of the self-centeredness that came upon them? You might be going to Mass this Sunday, and you'll hear this gospel read. Where is your talent lie? It really, what, in other words, I'm going to Mass, and I'm I'm going to hear this gospel. You know where it lies for you? At the door of the church, when you go out, not when you go in. God has given you so much love and care, and power. What are you going to do with it this week? Why is the world in such darkness around you? See, some people have so little capacity to think about anyone else but themselves. The person who has one talent, many times, what was the thing that the that the master said to that servant you lazy servant we, we, you know that we so many times think that it, it's there's something else but in discernment it, if we come to realize 
What is the darkness into which we're plunged? Why and how can we get so dark in our souls that we don't even know our blindness and our sin? In the same Mass today, you're going to hear this from St. Paul as he writes to the Thessalonians. The Thessalonians were very interested in the last day and the judgment. How is God, supposing I die today and you die, when you hear this, what what is going to happen on the other side? Nothing different as far as love. It's the kingdom of love. Everyone in heaven is doing the Father's will. Everyone in heaven loves one another. The kingdom is all about love. What capacity do I have if I am so self-centered? It's like a guy, 300 pounds, sitting on his sofa today, and you go home from Mass, and you're drinking your beer, and eating your chips and your salsa, and there you are, watching the game, and where's your wife, and where's your children, and what's going on? Self-obsession. I, me, mine, me. St. Paul says, to the, to the Thessalonians. It's the fifth chapter of the first letter to the Thessalonians. Concerning time and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, when people are saying peace and security, then suddenly disaster will come upon them, like labor upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light. What is the light? It's to live a life of love. And children of the day, we are not of the night and of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as they and the rest of the world do, but let us stay alert and sober. Paul is, you know, so many times in my life, I have feel like I'm just awaking from a dream. I was just with 53 exorcists and the, the, the awareness that the devil can actually possess, obsess, and torment souls, and that he's right there with these 53 exorcists telling stories of the darkness and the the satanic torment that is in, in people right here in this world because they've plunged themselves into such darkness. The reality of the hatred of the one who wants to tempt us to be in that wailing and darkness outside where there is going to be an eternal damnation, not just a a torment for this world, that I really was experiencing with these exorcists like an awakening, a a, a getting up from sleep. And when I come back, I, I live here with 30 priests. Not one of the priests at my table ever did uh, an, uh, uh, an exorcism. That's like telling, you know, what did Jesus send us out to do? To drive out Satan. How that darkness has overcome our time. Our day is so in the dark. I, we're not like the Thessalonians. Every time we go to Mass, when you're at Mass, Christ has suffered, Christ has died, Christ will come again. When? Today. He's coming to you. And if, you know, if there's a priest who's hearing this and you have never 
driven the devil out of anyone or never even recognized him, where do you think you meet him every time you step in the confessional box? Darkness is overtaking the people. Sin is his work. And death and eternal death and damnation is what he's working for. The day of the Lord is coming. And these these texts are meant for us to awaken people from their sleep so that they will be aware that judgment day is coming. And so many of us, I was recently with someone and this man had impregnated six women and he was coming to me and all of them ended in abortions. A young guy, no, just living this fancy free life. I said, what do you think your central sin is? Laziness. He is, it was, it just isn't sex. Absolutely no care for anyone except himself. So many young men are so self-obsessed. It's my joy, my pleasure, my, my, my satisfaction. What happens to the other six deaths of his own children and contributing to it? And what is what does he think his big sin is before God? And he almost died. And he almost died with that on his heart. And so many things, I believe, in our day. Why is the darkness so all around us? Because so many people are so unaware that they are so self-obsessed. The one talented person is the one who remains alone unless the seed fall into the ground and die itself remains alone you lazy lout you lazy servant to wake up to the tremendous capacity you have for love no matter how little or what you have you have a capacity because Christ is in you. This story of, of Jesus that he tells today is a tremendously important story for us. And where does it begin? Where do I begin every time I awake from sleep? To pray, to be aware that God has given me this capacity to love God, to love my neighbor today. How can I do this when I rush into the day without taking preparations of receiving from God? Increase my capacity. Why is the darkness around me so much? Because I haven't received the light from the only one who is light. Monsignor? Yes. You know, as you were speaking, it just kept leaping out at me, the, the um, imploring uh, request, essentially, of our Lord to us is that don't be afraid. The angels tell us, don't be afraid. I think there, the fear is the greatest blocker when you have generation upon generation of persons now who have failed to know authentic love, that because of the brokenness of our families and so many other things, that when they begin to receive that love, there is a fear of letting it go. Just like that servant who only had one talent, that there may, they may experience the love of God, but they're so afraid, they don't understand the nature of love, that it, 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 doesn't, div- it doesn't divide or go away, it only multiplies when you give it away. You know, the, it, it's so biblical what you just said. You see, what did that servant say when he came to his master? When when he comes to give his report, what does he say? I was afraid. I feared you. What blocked him that he buried the talent? It was the fear. He said, and then 
our Lord comes back. He is a compassionate God. But he said, if, if it was fear that drove you to that, if, and, and he, so he doesn't, doesn't take that as an excuse for not loving. And so today, I really believe, uh, I, I believe what I think, I think that's really true, what you say. But I also believe that what really needs to be awakened is those who are in charge of the, the teaching what the talents really are. I think what we fail to communicate is that the five talents are really love. The two talents are really love. Even the one talent is love. Everything is love. And, and, and when we fail to love, because that's what the kingdom of God is all about. It's, it's not about fear and dying and death. It's about love and life and light and truth. And the, the, the devil is pulling us into, and that's where the darkness is coming. And, and I think when I came back and being awakened to what the devil has done with his priests, we are in such darkness ourselves. If the priest is not awaking to this light every day, because that's exactly what gets you out of bed. The light. My heart is beating. And so when I preach on a Sunday morning, when with this, hopefully this will go out, not only to the people, but to the priests and to the bishops in their cathedral. What is the kingdom about? It's all about love. And so when I realize this, then this is really what the king is asking us to preach and teach. I think the fear will only increase, especially when it comes to dying. If you die in fear, if you die in darkness, that's what it's all about. And why? how can you die in darkness if you don't hear? The Thessalonians heard it from Paul. You are in the light. You aren't in the darkness. I don't have to write you to tell you about that. I've already preached this to you. Paul has taught the Thessalonians well. And so today at Mass, when you hear Christ has suffered, Christ has died, Christ will come again. The early Christians used to say, come, Lord Jesus, let it be today. And let me advance your kingdom of coming. Come, come. We are not afraid of death. We welcome it. We, we're not afraid of being here in this world or in the next. <clears throat> That's what really the spirit of the martyrs were in those early days. That was the spirit of Paul. That was the spirit of the Thessalonians. And that should be the spirit of the Omahans and the Scrantonians. Come. Where do we live or die? What difference does it make? Today is all, all about love. And if it isn't about love, then what am I going to do in heaven? Then I have to learn that here. And there's so much more to learn. Monsignor, and it, it's so important. Because, I mean, that person out there who said, well, if you love me, why do you let the storms damage? Why do you let the the illness cripple? Why do you let those hurt me? if you loved me so much. Mm -hmm. And that's where that trust breaks down. Yes. But then you've always told us, then look at that crucifix, look at the cross. Are the tornadoes and are the, uh, the hurricanes and the earthquakes, are these signs of God's um, punishment of us? I, I don't think so. And, and is, is the Ebola or um, disease or sickness or AIDS, is this God's punishment to us because we're so wicked? I think they're simply reminders of the trans transitional life that we have here. This is not our home. We, we are here temporarily, all of us. We're only here for a short period of time. Our, our, our destiny is eternal life. And because of Jesus, we have this opening now 
to the happiness of heaven. And all of us are awaiting that eternal happiness, who really understand what Jesus is all about. If I can teach who Jesus really is, this great lover of all mankind, this because his, he came from his father who was love, he is love itself. If you want to know about the father? Just look at me. And you want to know about me? Let we see the spirit. The spirit of love is in you. Every single one. If every one of us who have received the spirit, every single human has received the spirit. If you're listening to me, and you know, if this goes out to someone in India or Saudi Arabia or wherever you are, you have the spirit. It's in you. The spirit of love is in you. Love is, the, the spirit of love is even in the worst man who has joined ISIS. The spirit of love is there. You have to be fighting it. The darkness that's in you is from the evil one. He is hatred. He wants to kill. He is the total opposite of God. Who is God? God is love. And who wants to kill and destroy? The devil. And we who are now being awakened from this darkness, and how does he get us there? Sin and hatred is the exact opposite of love. And it's the, the, a terrible sin. And a big sin today, and I hope we'll all hear it, is laziness. Sloth. It's a capital sin. If you don't exercise the talents that you have, then you're a lazy servant. And you're going to be put outside because you're not exercising love. It's tis love and love alone the world is seeking. And I and you have the capacity to bring that love. If you have five talents, what a magnificent gift that would be. And we who have two, you know, the, the little saints, that's who we are, the little saints. Every one of us who have talents, bring them to love so that those who have self-centeredness in our midst and self-obsession and only look at themselves can see witnesses of the joy of living in love. Be a witness of love today. God bless. Thank you, Monsignor. You've been listening to Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. To hear and or to download this conversation, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. Or you can find it within the free Discerning Hearts app. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, which is to offer rock-solid and authentic spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com And join us next time for Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essef.